Today we will use Aurora HDR to turn this time lapse which I captured in Prague into something very strong and vivid. Hello beautiful people, how's everyone doing and welcome to a new video on Massimus Photography. So some of you guys had asked me to make more videos on my Aurora HDR time-lapse editing workflows. And as promised, here I am delivering the content that you guys requested. So before I start discussing the idea behind this workflow, I'm going to go ahead and discuss the content that we will be editing today. So this time-lapse sequence, which consists of 260 images, I captured in Prague on my recent vacation in Europe. And I think the composition is very interesting. And having 260 images, uh, that would give us, uh, using 24 frames a second, that would give us ultimately a video file as long as 10 to 11 seconds. So let's go ahead and use, um, choose an image file somewhere here in the middle of the sequence. So the idea is we want to edit one image out of the sequence. And then with all of the settings, create a preset, or now as Aurora HDR calls it, Aurora HDR look, and then use the batch processing uh, feature to process all of the uh, images in the sequence using that particular look that we came up with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check chromatic aberration reduction and then click create HDR. You may be wondering, why am I simply not using Lightroom? Well, there's nothing wrong with Lightroom. Lightroom is a wonderful program as well. But the thing is that whether you're um, editing and rendering audio or editing your image raw files and rendering them, every program is made differently. And while we may have the same tools or similar tools, um, like let's say contrast, we have a contrast slider in pretty much uh, every image editing program, it doesn't mean that the, pr the result that is produced that it's going to be the same. It may look similar, but it's not going to be the same exact look. Now, why am I using Aurora HDR for time lapse as well? Aurora HDR is famous for its strong, vivid, enticing, and detailed HDR looks. And I think combining that with time lapses is just wonderful. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my shadows and balance my image out a little bit here by using the Smart Tone slider. I'm gonna drag it up to something like 84. As you can see in the histogram, I have a lot of detail, a huge chunk of detail here in my midtones, which is good because as we use a, a sliders like contrast and clarity and smart structure, uh, it's going to allow us to really push a lot of these details to the left and right and just create a lot of contrast and ultimately create a very vivid and strong look. So we got our image opened up here with Smart Tone. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just pull this all the way to 100. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my blacks a little bit, open up my whites, and now we can go ahead and give it some contrast. I will be a little bit generous with my contrast slider because I am um, going for a strong HDR look. So something like 60 is pretty strong to, uh, to get started with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up my vibrant slider a little bit, just to bring up some of the color tones that may be weaker than others. And here comes the magic, HDR clarity. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up as well. Now take a look here at my midtones as, um, as they get pushed to the left and right as I increase the clarity. As you can see, the image is starting to look a little bit stronger, a little bit more detailed as well. I'm also gonna go ahead and give it a very generous smart structure slider here, something like around 60. I am starting to notice that there is a little bit of image um, sensor dust in some of these areas, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna bother uh, getting, getting rid of those. Uh, what's also very nice uh, about Aurora HDR is that your image is displayed with its full resolution. And I'm also recording this video at 4K so you can watch this in 4K and see all of this amazing detail. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit uh, so I can um, denoise my image a little bit. I'm gonna give it a value of something like 10, but I'm also gonna add a little bit more microstructure. I'm also gonna go ahead and add some additional sharpening here with my details boost. 
Okay, very conservative values. As you can see, things look a little bit uh, stronger. I will bring up my masking tool. This is just like in Lightroom. I'm gonna mask my uh, details, boost my sharpening. I'm gonna bring them up a little bit further though. And I think my denoise, I can maybe bring up a little bit further, something like, something like 14 perhaps, excellent. And I think we're pretty much good to go. I, ha I have been deciding, um, I I've been trying to decide whether I should add a little bit of image radiance or not. I mean, we don't want to go full nostalgic here, but I'm gonna add something like 20, something right around 20. And I think I'm happy with this look. So it's a pretty strong, detailed HDR look. I could have uh, gone even further with my contrast or HDR smart structure. In fact, let's go ahead and push this perhaps closer to 80. Excellent, so the next step would be Save filters as Aurora HDR look. I'm gonna call this proc time lapse, create. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click under file, batch processing, and a very important single images, browse. And I'm already in the correct folder, so I'm gonna go ahead and click and select all of my images in the sequence. Hit open. It takes just a moment for them to load. And then once it's loaded, I can click this blue continue button. And the folder that I'm gonna save it to is already correct. And then under Aurora HDR look, it's just a fancy way to say a preset. I'm gonna use my pre uh, user presets and then choose my proc time lapse, amount at 100, and then JPEG quality 100 and sRGB. Don't need anything to be enlarged, uh, actual size, and then click process. Now, once this is finished, we will go ahead and launch Adobe Premiere Pro to render our time-lapse video file. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Aurora HDR has successfully rendered our time-lapse sequence, and now I am in Adobe Premiere Pro, and I also have a new project window opened up, as you can see. But before I proceed importing my time-lapse sequence, I want to make sure that I have the correct settings. So under Edit, Preferences, and then Media, here we can determine the frame rate with which Premiere Pro will import our time-lapse sequence. Now with 60 frames per second as it is set to currently, our time-lapse sequence would turn out to be as long as four to five seconds. Given that we have 260 images, 60 frames is a little bit too much. You do the math, 260 divided by 60 would be something like 4.3, I believe. So that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go with the commonly used 24 frames a second and as we discussed earlier with 260 images, my time-lapse sequence would be as long as 10 to 11 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and press OK. And now I can double click on import media to start. And all I have to do is click on the very first image in the sequence and then make sure that image sequence is checked down here, this box. And then once I press OK or open and assuming that everything is named and numbered appropriately, Premiere Pro will conveniently create this file right here, which I can easily click and drag onto my timeline. And bam, here is my time lapse. Given that this is in plus 8K resolution, I'm not even gonna bother playing it in the editor as I'm editing. But there are a few additional things that I would like to do before I export my footage. I'm gonna go under editing. And as I have my um, footage selected here, under sequence settings, I do want to change my pixel aspect ratio from one to 16 by nine widescreen and then press okay. This is not mandatory, but I would like my footage to be widescreen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck uniform scale because as I stretch my video, I don't want my video to also uh, stretch up and down. So I only want to stretch the width in other words. So I'm gonna uncheck this and then double click on my footage. And as you can see, these blue points appear. And now I'm gonna click and drag the left. And as you can see, the right gets automatically stretched as well. And bam, there we go, the footage is stretched. The last thing I want to do is add a Flickr free plugin, which is free as the name suggests. From my experience with the default settings, everything is taken care of. Now, I highly recommend this plugin. It is free, it is amazing. I use it most of the time and it takes care of the job if I ever have any flickering. I don't think there's any flickering really going on or any noticeable flickering going on, but just in case, it's just a uh, precaution. So I'm gonna go ahead and now press Control and M 
on Mac, it would be Command and M, Command and M. And under format, we will choose H265 and then the 8K preset. Since I don't have any audio, I can just uh, simply uncheck the audio. I'm gonna change the frame rate to 24 and then make sure to name it appropriately. So proc time lapse 8K and then go ahead and save. And once this is exported, we'll take a look at the finished result. Thank you. 